Coming up, the Yankees offense lights up the Orioles and the Diamondbacks hold off the Dodgers. This is Locked On Now MLB. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are Locked On Now. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now MLB, local experts weighing in on the biggest stories in baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We've got our Locked On MLB host here to recap everything for you from baseball yesterday. We're going to start out with Anthony Rizzo, who hit three home runs in a career day, and the Yankees also got a win. Locked On Yankees and Orioles review yesterday's best performance. The best performance. Hold up, hold up. This is Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees, and the Yankees beat the Orioles 12-8. Shouldn't have been that close. Let's just admit it, it should not have been that close. But thanks to an Anthony Rizzo career night, as in three home runs in one night, the Yankees scored 12 runs. Joey Gallo hit a home run. Aaron Judge hit a home run on his 30th birthday. That's kind of cool. Gleyber Torres had a bases-clearing triple. Every regular in the starting lineup had a hit except for Kyle Higashioka. So the offense is firing on all cylinders after I complained about them last week. You're welcome. This is four in a row for the Yankees. The pitching, little iffy tonight. Severino gave up four runs, Lucas Leckie and Jonathan Loisaga combined to give up the second four runs in the eighth inning that made it a 10-8 game, and then Judge and Rizzo helped make it 12-8. So I will have a complete recap of this game on the next Locked on Yankees, along with a preview of Wednesday night's matchup between the Yankees and the Orioles. So tune in. Well, on the plus side, the Orioles scored their most runs of the season with eight. On the downside, they gave up their most runs of the season, allowing 12 to the New York Yankees in a 12-8 loss. Connor Newcomb here, host of Locked on Orioles. Well, it wasn't the best day for Jordan Lyles. wasn't the best day for Orioles pitching in total. The bullpen had their worst day of the year. Combination of Paul Fry, Brian Baker, and Alexander Wells gave up six runs. Jordan Lyles gave up six runs. And listen, credit to Anthony Rizzo for his three home run game, but two of those home runs were Mickey Mouse home runs in a Mickey Mouse ballpark that is Yankee Stadium. First homer for Rizzo, a 180 expected batting average. That last home run that he hit in the eighth inning, a 10 expected batting average. 10. Yes, the Orioles gave up too many hits and too many runs in this one, but uh, that was a Yankee Stadium loss. If I've ever seen one, we'll break it all down further on Wednesday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. The Astros made up for a loss Monday by beating the Rangers on the road yesterday. Locked On Astros gives the credit to Jake Odorizzi and points out how Houston will need starts like this from him all season long. We are Locked On Astros, your team every day. Oh, hey, you're back. (laughs) Remember we talked last night about Jake Odorizzi being the secret weapon? Well, you know what? He is a secret weapon because we need someone like him to deal in this long stretch that we have coming up in the last 30 plus days. We have a lot of games. And if Jake Odorizzi can continue to give the Astros starts like that, the sky's the limit for this team. The bats woke up a little bit today. They put a crooked number on the board. Kyle Tucker hit an absolute smoke bomb to right center field. And this team looked good. Rafael Montero is my favorite pitcher in 2022 for the Houston Astros. The bullpen, when they work, man, they know how to deal. They limited the Rangers to just one run, and Jacob Arizzi only gave up one hit with four strikeouts. So stay tuned in to Locked on Astros, where your team every day, Christian Javier, goes next on the mound. He's part of the six-man rotation. Let's hope that he finds the magic that he had his rookie season and is a consistent pitcher like we know him to be and using that invisible to strike out as many Rangers as he can. Stay tuned in to Locked on Astros with your team every day. Not quite sure if the Phillies offense was good against the Rockies or Colorado was just not up to the challenge defensively. Locked on Phillies and Rockies debate after Philadelphia put up 10 runs on Colorado. The Phillies win again and we're officially on a winning streak. I'm Connor Thomas, host of Locked on Phillies 
What an offensive performance from the Phils tonight. Double-digit runs against the Colorado Rockies and German Marquez. A great outing from Zach Eflin on the mound. Some solid bullpen work. It was just an all-around fun night at the yard on what was Dollar Dog Night at Citizens Bank Park. Man, it was Dollar Hits Night, too, because it seemed like the Phillies were just buying them left and right. Everyone, everyone was hitting. Bryce Harper, Odubel Herrera, Didi Gregorius, Alec Bohm, Gene Segura, Nick Castellanos. Man, it was a beautiful night. And this Phillies roster, this Phillies lineup, feels like they're starting to get hot. They can go on a stretch here, some good starting pitching, some good bullpen work, and the offense starts to, well, they're already hot with 10 runs in this one, 10 plus runs. Man, when you put up that type of performance, it means good things are coming. It's a great time to jump on the Philadelphia Phillies bandwagon because this team is just starting to heat up. Rock on Rockies fans. Paul Holden here from the Locked on Rockies podcast. Well, back-to-back -back days. The Rockies have really just played ugly baseball. They get blown out today 10-3, to and they are now 10-7 and on the year. Charlie Blackman, a couple of home runs. It's kind of really the only bright spot from this one. Uh, the Rockies simply just have uh, not come to play in Philadelphia so far. Ramon Marquez, seven hits over four earned runs, one walk and one strike out there and only three innings in a third. Uh, Julius Jacin, you know, com uh, comes in, gives up another three runs. Lawrence Gilbreth are fine, but the Rockies need to stop this trend of bad baseball. Uh, that's that's that margin of being above 500 is slowly closing. They're getting worse and worse performances from some players. Worry trend, worry some trends for the Rockies continue. Got to bounce back, got to split the series. We'll talk about it all right here on Locked On Rockies. Coming up, the Giants stay hot and the Mets hand the Cardinals another loss. This is Locked On Now MLB. Today's edition of Locked On Now is brought to you by Bet Online. It's the number one spot for all of your online sports gambling needs. Major League Baseball is well underway at this point, and of course, the NBA playoffs are getting very exciting. So make sure when you want to get your bets in, you just head over to Bet Online. Net. Welcome back to Locked On Now MLB. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We're going to continue our look around the league in Major League Baseball. Around the League. The Guardians' losing streak continues, hitting a new low on Tuesday. Cleveland didn't score a run against the Angels, and Locked On Guardians is looking all over for the missing bats. Hi, everyone. It's Jeff Ellis of the Lockdown Guardians podcast. And I need your help. We are currently looking for a missing offense. It was here just a week ago uh, when the Cleveland Guardians swept the favorite Chicago White Sox in three games. Since then, five losses and an offense has just completely disappeared. Uh, you go through and it's, there's Jose Ramirez and there's Miles Straw. Unfortunately, Stephen Kwan got hurt in the Yankee series. Uh, we have not seen him since, and it's just a very different team without him at the top of the lineup in that two spot. They're suffering all the way down the board through multiple positions. Uh, where do you feel comfortable? Who do you really trust right now when it comes to the Cleveland Guardians? If I was in charge of this team, I think my everyday lineup would involve you know, Hedges a catcher, first base Naylor, second base Rosario, shortstop Jimenez, third baseman Jose, Straw in center field, Let's make it Owen Miller at first. Uh, until Stephen Kwan's healthy, Palacios is left, and right field being Josh Naylor. Uh, or, you know, if Kwan was healthy, maybe Palacios stays in left. Kwan in right field, first base Naylor, with uh, Owen Miller playing every day in kind of that super sub role. Let me know what you think. Let me know how we can help find this missing offense of the Cleveland Guardians. The Diamondbacks defense stepped up in a big way to get the win against the Dodgers, as Locked on Diamondbacks tells us after the game. Defense is the story of the game for the D-backs, and for once, it's in a positive way. And we can't forget that David Peralta clutch bomb in the bottom of the eighth inning either. As the D-backs take down the Dodgers 5-3, Miller Thomas of Locked On Dimebacks here. We don't usually get a ton of defensive highlights from the D-backs, but we got a whole bunch of them tonight as the D-backs turn a season high. Five double plays. Dalton Varsho is making great plays in the outfield. Trey Turner got picked off. Chris Taylor got doubled up. It was a great defensive game from the D-backs, and no 
defensive highlight was bigger than that one in the eighth inning when Ian Kennedy got himself into a bases loaded jam, but he just needed a quick pep talk by Brent Strom, and then he ended up inducing a ground ball, and look at that, he was able to get out the jam, and little did he know David Peralta was going to come through for him in the clutch because the bottom of the eighth inning, we know, Cooper Hummel, he's been drawing walks all season, and he did it again to start the eighth inning, then David Peralta strides up, he's fearless, he's clutch, 1-1 count, drills the slider for a bomb, D-backs take the 5-3 lead. Mark Melanson shuts it down in the ninth. Now, we got ourselves a 1-1 series. There's only one game left tomorrow, so the D-backs have a chance of beating their NL West rival, LA Dodgers, with a series win. Can you believe it? I can't. One more game left tomorrow. The Dodgers had plenty of chances to beat Arizona, but left a ton of runners on base. Our Locked on Dodgers talks through all the missed opportunities. So, baseball's kind of stupid sometimes, huh? What's up? It's Jeff from Locked On Dodgers. The Dodgers lost tonight to the Diamondbacks 5-3. Dodgers had 15 base runners. Unfortunately, five of them were erased on double plays, another one on a caught stealing, and then six were left on base. So only three runs to show for it. All three of those coming on a three-run double by Will Smith in the first inning. And the third inning, the wheels came off a little bit. Tony Gonsolin gave up a couple hits, a couple walks, and Gavin Lux had a big error. Diamondbacks scored three runs, and then Bruce Dargratterall Gave up a big two-run home run in the bottom of the eighth inning that uh, was the difference in the score. Uh, overall, just an ugly, ugly, stupid game for the Dodgers. They didn't execute. Uh, I mean, some bad luck. Justin Turner hit a ball that would have been a home run in, I think, 23. Uh, the broadcast said 27. Something else said 23. A lot of stadiums. Instead, it was a fly out at the wall. Uh, and then, like I said, all the double plays. Some of those were uh, hit really well. Some of them weren't, but all... Just one of those games that you just have to say, wow, baseball's stupid. Eh, let's play again tomorrow. And that's what the Dodgers and Diamondbacks will do with a day game tomorrow. So Vince and I will be with you tomorrow morning like we are every weekday morning to talk about this game and all the different ways that baseball was stupid tonight. So check it out. Make us your first listen every day. And thanks for listening to Locked On Dodgers. The San Francisco Giants, one of the surprise teams last year, but nobody is doubting them this season. And the Giants look as good as ever with their start to the year. Locked on Giants goes through an easy win for San Fran against Oakland. With another win tonight, the San Francisco Giants are 120 and 60 since the start of the 2021 season. They've literally won twice as many games as they've lost over that span. Ben Kaspik with the Locked on Giants podcast. Carlos Rodon went out there and continued to dominate tonight, and the Giants just kind of rolled to another victory. They led the major leagues with 107 wins last year, and right now they're only trailing the Mets by half a game through 18 games this year. Giants just got back from a grueling road trip, but that didn't even slow them down. It was their fifth win in a row. Uh, It seems to be a different guy every night on offense right now, and tonight it was Wilmer Flores being the hero. So, man, what a great run the Giants are on 120 and 60. We'll talk about it on tomorrow's Locked on Giants, where it's your team every day. Certainly wasn't pretty at times, but the Padres beat the Reds on Tuesday in Cincinnati. Locked on Padres has the recap after a win that included three San Diego errors. No, I am still not saying his name. What's going on, guys? Javier Reyes here of the Locked on Padres podcast. Coming at you live with a nice hat behind me for what was a weird messy but still fun game the Padres win this one against the Reds who they just played last week nine to six messy because there were three errors by the Padres in this one which was very uncharacteristic of the team that broke the record for most games to start the season consecutively without an error but the offense more than made up for it Big triple from Jake Cronenworth. I almost forgot for a second. Big triple from Jake Cronenworth. Hassan Kim, who made one of those aforementioned errors, he hits a solo shot in this one as well. And, of course, an absolute nuke mammoth shot from the first baseman, who must not be named, guys. A three-run shot for him. Absolute tank home run, and good for him. His first of the year. Hopefully many more to come, even if a little bit unlikely. Uh, Hopefully Mackenzie Gore is a little bit more sharper than Joe Musgrove was tonight because Joe Musgrove, while not all of the runs were earned because of the errors, wasn't the sharpest tonight, but still wasn't all that terrible, which actually gives credence to just how good he is as an ace-quality pitcher. Mackenzie Gore, hopefully the Reds aren't too familiar with having just faced him last week. And also, Luis Campizano is at DH today. Check out tomorrow's episode where I talk with Arm Layton about Luis Campizano and other Padres prospects. And of course, guys, as always, keep it locked in and keep the faith. 
That's it for today on Locked On Now MLB. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked On MLB and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Now.